Welcome to Receipt Printing from the Cloud, going old school. Hey, I'm Eric, and um, in this video, I'm gonna show you how I'm I'm trying to print to a receipt printer from the cloud, Business Central, of course, um, using some of the uh, the the cloud to disk technology that I had I I've, I've been playing with for for a while now. Um, if you've seen the first video on this, you'll see the, the file access from the cloud to on-prem. So in this, I'm going to tackle printing. In this video, I'm going to tackle printing. And more specifically, I want to tackle how I deal with a receipt printer. So I went on to, I went on to AliExpress and I purchased this thing. So uh, that's a... Um, you know, it's it's a uh, it's a receipt printer. It was let me see that's printer. No, forty five. I think I paid forty four dollars at the time. So it was the cheapest one I could find that had a USB plug. Actually, also has Bluetooth, um, but. Uh, I just wanted it to be cabled because I like my printers cabled. Then I know where, where they are. I can find them. Anyway, um, but receipt printers are a interesting, uh, an interesting challenge because um, see when when you install something like this. If we are able, I don't know if you, you guys are able to see this, but let me explain. So this is the printer after I installed the driver. You know, we get paper sizes because you know all printers these days, all reports for that matter, are kind of the sign that paper size is fixed. I mean, in this case, it says we got 58 millimeters. This is the printer here. Yeah, it's maybe I should have said that. Uh, the um, the the there's a million versions of this. It's basically the same, and they all kind of call POS fifty eight, uh, and they should cost less than fifty eight. Um, anyway, but but we'll see here if we look at the printer driver. It says okay, we can do fifty eight millimeters times two ten, which is the width of an A four, or times. 297 millimeters with the heights of an A4 page or 58 millimeters times three meters, wherever that comes from. And and yeah, you know, a a, a, a printout can can be long here. I, I, I tried to print some, you know, some whatever standard report out of, of BC onto uh, onto the re onto the printer that didn't really work well. Um, the problem is that when you want to print on something like this, you know, the paper size is defined by the data. Uh, meaning that if you want to print something with, with 10 lines, then that's how long the receipt is. If you want to print something with a thousand lines, then that's how long the receipt is. So we have a scenario where content determines paper size, not the other way around. Uh, and the printer driver will do something funky where it will decide not to print anymore if there's nothing printable on the rest of the page. But that doesn't really help us because when, when we need to render a report, then we need to know the size we want to render in. And then we could start thinking about, okay, what about if we were able to... Um, to look at the data and figure out the paper size we need and then tell the printer that this is the paper size to use, uh, potentially, but that, that, that gets, uh, that gets complicated also. Um, but actually let's, let's detour just for a second. Say, how do we actually print from business central? Um, before we get into how do we print to this guy? Um, and the way, if you go, if we go into Business Central, and I think I have the Print Explorer open here from Cloud to Disk, but if I go into Printer Management, we can see that, oh, 
I got a printer. Uh, and if you go into your, you might see an email printer or you might see some printers from Universal Print. Uh, you might see if you have the, the the SharePoint connector app installed, the SharePoint is, is a printer also and so on. So there are printers can show up in here. And how do they do that? Well, let me show you. In this case, we can see that the one that's showing up here now is is my laser printer, meaning that if I go and do a customer top 10 list here and I select my laser printer, I print that. Report is being rendered. Here we go. Come on, BC, you can find the printers. And then now we're printed. I don't know if you can hear the printer uh, but we got it's customer top 10 report so that's pretty good um, this is also cloud to disk uh, and I'll show you in a second but but how do you actually get BC to do this no, forget about how the actual printing happens but how do we get BC to no, have a printer. Um, there is a, let's see if we can make this bigger. There is a event. In report management, there is a event called on after setup printers. And basically this is an event that BC calls whenever it needs to show a list of printers saying, what printers do I have? So you can, your app can say, hey, in this case, in, in, in cloud to disk I have a table called known printer. Uh, so I simply loop through the known printer table, and then I add a paper tray and uh, with a paper source, and then I add a, uh, I add a name of the printer and the, so this is, we, we can see that the parameters, sorry, I should have done that before. The parameter to this uh, event is a var transferred dictionary of text, comma, JSON object. Meaning that the, the, the index here is, is the ID you give the printer and the payload is a very specific form JSON uh, structure that tells you that you have a printer and this printer has uh, paper trays and what paper do you have in the specific tray um, so that's all good and that means that if I go back to my this guy so now I'm, I'm asking Klaus of this to tell me what printers do I have on my local machine I have all these printers and we can see that in this case my laser jet has been installed uh, and I give it a name we got letter and we're using the upper tray. So I could go and say, okay, let me install my my desk jet also. Uh, and we'd call that desk jet here. Uh, same thing. So in this case, cloud to disk will create a known printer in, in the um, uh, in, in that table. So whenever I go and do, hey, I want to do the customer top 10 here, I click the download, or the drill down. You see, I got a new cloud printer because the, the printer management, wow, the printer management uh, table just query the events and, and whatever you tell you have, that's it. So that's the, hey, we know there's a printer. The next thing that happens is that you print. And then there basically is, in this case, a uh, another event called uh, on after document print ready, which gives you a, uh, a well, basically it gives you a, a stream and you can tell you get also the, the payload and 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 you can tell if 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 you printed this success mean success means that you decided to print it if no event subscriber returns success true 
then you will just get the download as usual when you when you hit print. But if you if success is set, then uh, then BC knows that somebody has taken care of this print, so nothing else happens. And what happens down here is basically it's getting sent to uh, to my 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 cloud to disk receiver, and um, and and then the local phone. You can you can check the first video for for the details on that. But the the, the local module will then throw it out to the printer, and that's all good. The problem here is that this is now rendered as a PDF. So what we get in the document stream here is a PDF. Uh, and then we're back to, now we're full circle back to the the problem with receipt printers and paper sizes and the chicken or the egg. So, so we need to know the paper size based on the data in order to render the report correctly. Otherwise, you, let's say you choose the, uh, the, the three meter paper size and you have a footer. Well, then there is something to print at the end of the report. So the, the whatever comes out of, of the printer, you know, will come out three meters. Uh, and then you got the nice total footer uh, in um, there. So, so that's pretty bad. Um, but a receipt printer is kind of, you know, if we go back and, and grab this guy, you know, so, so this thing, you know, it, it's it's kind of like a, um, a good old matrix printer. I, I I got one here that I actually wanted to hook up to Central at some point. I may be I may do that soon because now I have all the software to it. Um, but you know, you print one line at a time, and then the printer just stops, and then you can decide you print another line. Um, and and that's kind of a an easy way to actually get something out on the printer uh, depending on because we, we could do something like this let me go back here and then you know we we could start i was i was playing here from youtube hello world um and and we could ins try to insert uh, an image. Let's see if we can do that. Uh, demo files. I'll grab something that high contrast. The raccoon. There. So we, let's try to print this. You see already here. There's something weird going on. Or that's the. And this size is different from that size. And your margins are pretty small. And it's well, the margins are. Um, and we, we, we can see that we, we kind of got a raccoon here. So that is, uh, that works, but, but it's, it's, it's complicated for that, uh, for that reason. So depending on, on what you actually want to put on your seat, it might not be as graphical as a picture of a baby raccoon. Then it would be pretty cool to do the line oriented printing. So I tried to do that. And the way that works, let me actually find something else because it, it, let me, uh, let me find here. So now we are over in C sharp. And here is a function called print line two. I guess print line one was not very good. Um, and we can see here that the in the the meat of the function we have a print direct dot write printer, um, and what I had to do here is basically if you, if you see print direct, we say open oh, printer, then we get the printer name, and we have to work with a pointer suddenly. Then we say start doc printer, starts page printer. We write printer, we end page printer, we end doc printer, we close the printer. Um, so the problem here is that in order to actually do this, at least on the windows, you can see up here I have the print direct. I have to go directly into the print spooler driver. 
say, okay, now I just want to send data into the printer. Ignore all the fancy layouting and, and all that good stuff. And I just want to print, send raw data directly to a printer. And if we go back here and I close this guy and see how does this actually work. In this case, here's my little example. So uh, I have the print lines function in, in, in the cloud to disk library. I pass a printer name and I pass, in this case, a JSON array. And we got yellow bird because that's way better than hello world. This is line two and we could, we could add something more. Uh, YouTube something. Let's deploy this thing. And let's switch over to the printer so you guys can see if stuff's happening or not. Print Explorer. I get my printers. Select the, the, the point of sale printer. I say print lines. So now I can just oh. See if I can show this camera. I don't know yet. We got YouTube there, right? So so with with this thing I can actually just send text over to a printer. But you might want to do more than just text. And uh, for that we need to use something called escape codes. Uh, so the way printers worked in the olden days, the way printers actually still works, but this is kind of just abstracted away. Uh, wait, hang on, that was the printer. Oh man, I got too many things I can control here. Uh, so the way this actually still works today, this just abstracted away, is the fact that you send commands to a printer and um, even a, a laser printer or test jet would actually happily kind of print a line uh, and then you need to tell it to actually print the entire page in case of a laser printer or something like that. Um, but the way it works is that you can send escape codes. And what, what are escape codes? Well, if you have a, let's see if I can find this. I got it somewhere here. Uh, the, there it is, the manual for 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 the printer then we can see that let, let's uh, find a uh, here's a good one so escape s zero turn stop with on escape dc4 turn stop with off so what is that well we can we can scroll down and see because this is actually a very very friendly manual as soon as you can do so Select double with escape SO0. So SO0, escape, sorry, let's start with that. Escape is a specific character. Escape is hexadecimal 1B or uh, decimal 27. Uh, so a character that you normally cannot see on screen. Sometimes if if it's somebody is trying to render, you'll probably see an arrow pointing backwards. That'll be that way. Um, but it, it's not a character per se, it's a control character. And 14, so the S0 is, is decimal 14 or hexadecimal uh, zero E, or just an E. Um, again, a non-visible character, but it's a con controlled character nonetheless. Uh, and we can see the same thing here, the disable double, double width is escape DC4, where DC4 is actually decimal. 20 or hexadecimal 14. So we can implement this. Um, so we let's create a double begin, which is not a, uh, that's, the, that's, see, whenever you use the word begin, the, the, the format is saying, ah, oh, you gotta put an end to that one. Um, it's kind of stupid because it's, it's it's added to the to the source thing together with the uh, like the curly brackets and so on. But but begin is not a curly bracket. It, it's a valid English word that potentially could be used in a variable like double begin. We will create a double end here. That's also a text two. 
So it, double, let's see if I can remember this. So double begin one. That's ASCII 27 and double begin, uh, not end, go away. Double begin two, that would be set double with, so that would be 14. And then we have double end, one equal again 17, and double end two would be, was it 20? I think it was 20. Yeah, yeah, it was 20. So in this case, let's have the uh, the yellow bird be double begin plus this text plus double end. Otherwise, we'll just print everything in in the in the double width. So let's let's try this out. Print Explorer, let me get my printers. There it is, print lines. Let's see. Oh, hang on, let's let's switch over. Now I rigged the camera to actually show this printer. Then we might as well actually show it. There we go. Uh, I'm hitting print. Let's just hit again. We could also add a line feed, but we can See that yellow bird is now double width, and the two lines on the are uh, not double width. So we could we could do the same thing with the uh, with YouTube, or we could do something else. Um, and there's also if we really are going to go crazy, I'm not going to do this uh, in this video because we already have 22 minutes. But we can print barcodes. We can actually do image stuff if we really want to. Uh, we can define characters and use those and invented printing. Upside down printing. There, there's lots of uh, there's, there's lots of uh, inter oh, this is a weird PDF. You see these, this is this is separate text modules. Anyway, um, in the olden days, really olden days, printers were slow, uh, meaning that that in, in prints like this, where you could print a whole receipt, and then you know you go to a go to the sh to the store and and you print a receipt, and it takes a few seconds, and it prints a retired receipt. But in the old days, what we had to do with receipt printers that we would actually print, you know, use use. In, I, I used to do point of sale stuff in there back, back, way, way back in the day. So we would print a line. So you scan something, then you would actually scan another thing. And as you scanned item number two, it would print the first because then you could still cancel the one you just uh, just scanned without printing it. So it was kind of a delay saying, oh, okay, when we're two up, then we're going to print the header and then we're gonna gonna print the, uh, the first item and so on um, so in order for to make sure that if you had a, like a long receipt it wouldn't get you wouldn't have to wait on the printer because receipt printers were slow back in the day um, but we did all sort of stuff like this where we're formatting uh, formatting receipts to uh, to look nice with escape codes so I think I'm going to end this here and saying that's um, that's printing uh, to a receipt printer from uh, from Business Central. Uh, and sure, we could design a 5.8 millimeter report. And depending on what, if you want to print something uh, that is static in length, no issues. Uh, that will work quite well. Or if you design your reports, so you print on the very long paper size and you make sure there's the nothing in the bottom ever, then you can also print a, a report that, or you can join the, the league of uh, old geezers like me who think it's kind of fun to, to do something with escape codes again. Anyway, uh, 
I promise to remind everybody that the uh, the the two years of YouTube and giveaway is still on, so the link is below to to join that. Um, you can win a uh, a toolbox license. Um, and uh, let me know if if you have ever used escape codes. Uh, let me know in the comments below or if or how you would go about printing on a forty four dollars uh, receipt printer from AliExpress. Uh, anyway, when you're done with that, I suggest checking out this video because it's very good and the YouTube algorithm thinks it's just for you. Take care. Bye.